Welcome, my friends. This is an unboxing, but more importantly, a commentary video. If you just want to see someone rip open the contents real fast, go to another video. Please don't down like my, downvote my video for that. I'm telling you it's commentary video. We're going to take our time and slowly undress this box. Go into the foreplay. Oh, why am I talking like this? This is horrible. Let us look at Komet Seth. Gosh, let's, let's take a moment to think about how great Komet is as a board game. It's not perfect. The reference things that are universal language instead of just making it obvious on every card what everything does. There's downsides to it, but basically, it's one of the best war games, especially light war games. And by light war game, I don't mean super simplistic like Small World, which is still great. By light war game, I mean a game that doesn't take eight hours. It doesn't take a bunch of neckbeards to get together and spend all day doing it. You can get together, and when everyone knows what they're doing, play it in an amazing 90 minutes sometimes. Uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, and with lots of variability, so much customization, very little luck, just the right amount, but lots of unknown information. This is the second expansion after Comet to Seti, which I like a lot. The main great things it adds are the Black Pyramid, the Path to Seti. It's still very cool, not as essential all the time, especially with new players, but we are just admiring different aspects of the art. For this because it already looks gorgeous. What makes Comet Seth so special is that it takes this 2-5 to five free-for-all game into a 3-6 to six player, one versus all game. Very unusual for a war game to be one versus all. It does happen. I know in Fortress America it happens. And in some others I think it happens, but mostly it happens organically in the form of people picking alliances against whoever is winning the most temporarily, causing emotional upset and pain. And let's look at the back some more as well, actually. So, ah, uh, these cool images, this beautiful. The purple pyramid, of course, is Seth's pyramid. This product is not a toy. It is not intended for use of persons 14 years of age or younger. A 14-year-old could handle this, but I get what you're saying. I get what you mean. Ah, oh, looks so badass. Now, Seth, don't even get me started on Seth. This asshole, this fucking badass, is so strong. He's here to destroy. He's here to dominate. He doesn't care about your petty squabbles. He's here to end squabbling by laying down devastation and death. Oh, uh, after Tassetti, the Nile Valley flinches again. The heart of the Delta... A dark purple gleam streaks the skies, filling the your troops' hearts with fear. An all-powerful city emerges from the sands, dominated by an amethyst pyramid. An ancient god awakens. His cruelty is matched only by his fury. Seth is back. In Comet Seth, you will be able to embody the all-powerful jackal-headed god, or become one of the members of a force who will have to coordinate together to save the Black Lands. Now creatures, new creatures come to play, ancestral temples buried in the desert are waiting to be discovered, and a new ally is aiding the members of the Force. The time of the fratricidal wars is over. The time has come to unite against the common enemy. But who will win? The alliance of players or the cruel power of Seth? Warning, this expansion cannot be played without the Comet base game, because that is how board game expansions work, and video game expansions, and almost anything that says expansion, like a house expansion, won't work without a house it's expanding. Almost tautological, but they're being kind about it by letting us know. Mm, smell that. It smells great. It smells like glory. All right, so let's take a look. Medigo, Medigot. I say I always say Medigo, but I think yeah, I know what it is. Your hobbies have a soul. I like that. Ah, oh, Comet, so freaking good, Comet. Someone should make an unboxing video about the latest expansion. Cyclity is still a great, great game in many ways, underrated, and for some people, even more perfect than Comet. 
for me, I like Komet even more. Innis need to really give it a shot. I've been having mixed feelings about it, feeling like maybe it's overhyped, but I'm sure it's wonderful. Takinoko is great. Don't know those other two, but I'd like to try them. What else do we got here? I don't know these ones as much. Well, let's move on to Komet Seth. What do we have here? Interesting. So, we right off the bat have our reference sheet, right? Now, just as Medigo likes to do to be language independent, to probably save money so that they only have to make one version, we have the version that's not in English. I am a cretin who only speaks English, and that is horrible, I know. But I'm simply not going to need this one. This seems to have a reference for all the new stuff. So this can go away. Go back to Europe, reference guide. But, you know, God bless Europe still. Alright, so. We know that we have the white, red, and blue pyramids in their respective tiles in Kemet. And then the black pyramid with its tiles in Tosseti. But now we have the Seth tower tiles. Reminder. It is forbidden to purchase two powers tiles with identical powers. And by identical powers, it doesn't mean that some of the powers on them overlap. It means, like, literally the, the illustration is the same. It's a funny thing to remind there, since it doesn't even look like there's a lot of them that are the same. Um, let's take a look at just a couple of them. Level 1, units corruption. Steal up to three units belonging to different opponents. Primarily in their reserve. Primarily in the reserve. Against two players, you only steal two units. That's worried weird right off the bat. That's worrying. Prime, like, like, do you have to do it from the reserve? Or is it just like suggesting? Or does it mean the majority? It might mean majority. Energy drain. Gain one prayer whenever an opponent uses the prey action. That is huge. Servile Corruption. Plus one strength when Seth uses the Corrupt an Opponent troop. Using the Corrupt a Creature action. This is not useful to the Alliance. Interesting. So let's skip around a little bit. Let's look at the Hypnotic Cobra. It's not the thing with the Cobra's hypnotic. I, th I don't know. I'm doing the wrong thing. No, that's not that's not the same thing, sorry. For the link troop, plus one movement capacity. The opponent cannot play divine intervention cards in combat. That's pretty good. A little bit like the snake stopping creatures abilities, but this one uh and again the question will come up of hey, does the snake from the blue pyramid stop all the new creatures too and their powers? I do not know. Spontaneous ceremony a gold action token thing. This little gold action token explanation of how the gold action token works also showed up in Tosseti, but basically it just clarifies how gold action tokens work. In the base game, they kind of explain it in a roundabout way, I, I believe in a roundabout way, and it's kind of implied, and I think they counted all too much on common sense and implication, but they didn't really spell out how the gold tokens just actually work. So this is just repeating them spelling out, this is how gold tokens work. Any tile that uses a gold token follows this rule. This applies to Tassetti as well, and this also applies to the base game. They just didn't say it there as well. So take that, play, replace one of them with a Battle Mirror Special Combat card. The opponent, opponent's combat card damage is also applied to him. So that is huge right there. Then we have a giant crocodile. Plus one force. What do you mean by force? Is that the new way of saying plus one battle strength or strength? I think force means strength now and they're being inconsistent with their translating. This whole language independent thing. I'm all for multiculturalism, but in the case of this game has been, as I said, its weak point because it's led to some some things like that. Note, male pronouns have been used for simplicity and readability. Well, I wasn't offended before, but now I am because I'm reminded that it's all male pronouns. 
Even, what about if it's a, it's a lady character? You're still going to say he? Frickin' sexist board game designers. We still love them, though, because they make great board games. They really do. A combat vulture. For the strength plus two strength. Why is it saying strength here if the other thing was force? That is weird. Plus one force. Plus two strength. And they're talking about the arm holding a sword, which is what we mean by combat strength. That's weird. All right, that's okay. We don't mind. We don't mind. Now, this is an interesting thing. Seth creature cards. A creature card is usable by Seth if the opponent power tile is available to purchase. And the Seth pyramid is at least at the corresponding level. It's like you corrupt the creatures that were available, you know, before. And it has, and includes the black ones too, so it has the expansion in there. So that's kind of awesome. And also gave us some updated ones here. So what are we replacing? Oh, interesting. We're replacing the Sphinx. He now has plus three power, strength, and plus one movement capacity. I don't know how much movement and strength he gave before, maybe just two. But the main thing that was interesting with him was when you purchased the blue Sphinx, you would also immediately get a victory point. Not the case anymore. So I think they're just making him stronger, but you can't just buy the victory point as easily with him. Oh, okay, Legion, your troops can now hold seven instead of five only if all troops belong to the same color. That had to be updated because, of course, now some troops can have multiple colors in them. Super cool. So it is kind of clarifying how these creatures are going to work when they are controlled by Seth. I think that's very cool that they become corrupted creatures. And now we have a few new alliance powers. All right, so Osiris for the linked troop, plus one movement. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, movement capacity, Osiris linked troops gains all the different battle power tiles acquired by the alliance. Sweet. Uh, that's confusing. So, I mean, like, even if it's not your battle power tile, if, if it's in the Alliance and you have Osiris, it gives that to you. That's cool. Alliance recruitment. When a member of the Alliance chooses a recruiting action, he can recruit friendly units in his city or his own units in friendly cities. It adds two more units without paying recruitment. Alliance prayer. When a member of the Alliance chooses a prayer action, the Alliance wins two prayers to divide up. Uh, okay, so a lot of this won't make sense to me until I truly have my head wrapped around how Alliance works, but it seems cool. We have one for each of the, the color pyramids there. So all of this is pretty good so far. This is the one that, again, has to go back to Europe. With respect. Or stay here. We don't... You don't have to leave because you're an immigrant. I just can't read you. Now, this is pretty darn swell, I think. We have our rule book here in proper. Moving the camera a little bit. The glare of the light makes my hands look more gross or hairy than they are. They're very normal in real life. Why do I care what you think of that? So the Valley of the Nile shudders, the heart of the... the okay, we, we read that, and it was pretty epic. We're still chilled out because of it. In, I won't read this whole thing, but just a little bit here. In Kemet Seth, uh, Seth, players are separate into two teams. A player plays Seth and aims to take control of the Kemet Black Lands. The other players embody the Alliance and will have to resist the invasion. So you have the City of Seth. That's an overlapping thing that you put over the top northern Temple of All Gods. Or... Um, on the other map, the, uh, is Sanctuary of All Gods or the, uh, you know, Delta Temple, as it's called. Portals of Seth. Seth's portals are connected to each other and are considered adjacent. So that lets them get around more easily. The Sacred Temples. The Sacred Temples are new figurines that the Alliance will build during the game. So level one, level two, level three. And there's three different levels that can be assembled, put together. I saw someone spray painting them gold, and I think I want to do that. The day phase track. The day phase track is replaced is placed above the city of Seth according to the number of players. I do not understand that yet. But that's okay. I don't really know the rules. But we can see 
it all looks pretty darn swell. We also know that you can play with pretty much everything from the last expansion, Tassetti, except for Tassetti itself, which is kind of, you know, seems like a real miss, but really, I like the Tassetti board a lot, but what really added to that expansion was the inclusion of the Black Pyramid, because you can play with it right away with anyone, and it's wonderful, and just as white is economy and flexibility, and blue is defense and manipulation and subtlety, and red is aggression, attack, and mobility, black is miscellaneous and also utility, which is a very, very powerful thing to have a utility belt in your back. But this is not about to say this is about set. With night phase, day phase, alliance turns, Seth turns, eclipse. This is all cool new stuff. I don't even know what eclipse is going to be like yet. All right, so this is that's the rule book. Looks pretty darn awesome. We have stuff on Seth. We have stuff on the alliance. We dig all of this. We like it. Buying power tiles, mixed troops. I am in favor of mixed marriages and mixed troops. All beautiful things. Why am I making so many jokes where I'm trying to be edgy? It's bullshit. Just do the unboxing video. Yeah, I'm with you. Alright, so this is pretty cool because this Seth action board maybe didn't need to be, but it is noticeably larger than any of the other action boards. And Seth's a little extra buff, just to show, guys. He's not fucking around. Uh, he has a 12-point max. I think that's the same as the other people. Um, his actions seem to just do more, you know, two movements instead of one, three prayer points instead of two, still a recruit action, don't know what this one does yet, to just kill two guys, why are these yellow, not sure, raise pyramid, we know that, buy a purple, buy a purple, so we can buy two purple a turn, something with a divine intervention card, recruit, recruit, so he is just loaded with stuff he can do and with power, he is overpowered, and we like that about him. That is his thing. And here is where we get to the point where we start seeing the power tiles that can be punched out. What I do is I print off an extra reference thing from online and then glue the quick explanation on the back of power tiles. I actually even do that with Divine Intervention cards. I cut out the explanations in English and I put them within a sleeved uh, you know, card sleeve. That way no one has to check a reference for what power tiles or Divine Intervention cards do. They can if they want but it's on each of them also. And that's what, how I think it should have been. Even though the back has a cool thing, that would have been better. But what we're seeing here is just fantastic. The art is as good as ever, if not even better. And um, so these are, I understand that these are power tiles. I don't get this cool thing yet. That's cool. Different on different sides. I don't get this cool thing yet. We have several of these of different amounts. I am worried though that even though this makes it go up to six players, if you have six players and if any of them are new, I'm worried that you really can't play this with new players. Just as Tosetti is a bit too much with new players uh, without them playing regular first. Even Black Pyramid regular, but regular. This seems to be the same way. You'd have to play regular first, then show them to, uh, Seth, because it seems that it just adds a lot of layers to an already pretty complex game for how fast it can be. It can be very fast-paced and feel very light, but it's, I think, easily twice as heavy lifting for learning time as Cyclades, for example. This is awesome, whatever the hell this is. This is great. Alright, so... More awesome. Are these a slightly different size? No, I think it's just an illusion. This is cool. These... These path things up here. We like these. The, the stuff that happens during the night. Like, oh, I get it. Like, Alliance goes and... Oh, okay, so for different player counts, Alliance goes. Then, you know... Seth goes, the night phase, etc. So, I will learn all of this in time. 
So these are power tiles. You get that. You get that this does that cool thing. Um, now here is the something resistance that I've been really excited for. Just the fact that you have at the Delta Temple was never that confusing. Um, we know that at the end of the night phase is when you collect the bonus for having two. So before, at the end of the day phase, so before the night phase. So even though you don't have a final night phase, if you'd win the game, you could still get that bonus. But that northern area, both for the uh, the one map where it's a Delta Temple, and for the other map where it's the Sanctuary of All Gods, that is going to get covered over with this awesome badass thing. This is Seth's Temple, and it has several different spots in the city. This dark, cruel city, but I'll tell you what, there's only one spot for a pyramid, my friend. And that is the purple pyramid. No more screwing around, no more pretending. Oh, he doesn't have a purple pyramid. Don't lie to me. He does. Ah, oh, look at this. This is so freaking good. I don't even know, I get that these are his prayer nodules. They, uh, you know, prayer thing. That they look seem a little bit extra large and thick, which I like. They are a little extra large and thick, of course, because he's a little extra large and thick. Awesome. What's this cool clear one? I don't even know. I love it. What's this other cool clear one? What's this gray one? Is that his gray one? So all of his, even if they do the same stuff, are a little extra big and thick because he's not messing around. And here's his player turn marker thing. Jeez, it looks great. And finally, his pyramid is the same size though, but you know what? Contrary to everything I just said, size isn't what matters when it comes to pyramids. It looks quite, it's beautiful though. Just the right amount of texture and sparkle. Level four. God, it really makes you want to be Seth. All right, so. We have his battle cards, which I'm sure are also overpowered. They must be. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Do not damage, do not damage. Find the opening spot. These might not be the kind of card things that open. Maybe they're just meant to be looked at. Of course I'm kidding. I have a technique so I don't damage this, don't worry. Oh, he's going to damage it. No, I won't. I know what I'm doing. I freak out too easily, people. Oh, this is cool. Badass. I'm so far, these actually don't seem that overpowered, though. This one might, though. Infinite blockage is what that looks like. Huh. Two strength and you recruit? That's weird. Whoa. So what, you can just decide how to spin three between those? I don't get that. Or they each equal three. I don't know what that means. Just four strength. Three strength, then you can return your battle card, maybe. Five strength, but then you kill three of your own guys. Each of these seem overly unique, and that could be a downside, that there's just more total rules and nuances to learn in a game that already has a fair amount of rules and uh, nuances. I get this is a long unboxing video, so you knew that coming in. You knew it. You wanted it. I knew you wanted it. Alright, so we have these cool purple Seth, what must be Divine Energy cards. They are not, these are the cards that show you the power of each of the monsters if you corrupt them. But this is an interesting thing because of the fact that... Yeah, no, this is a really interesting thing. Yeah, this is great. And then we have, I guess... Yeah, just 
Seth's divine intervention cards. Uh, then, I guess, just new divine intervention cards. I don't know if you use these instead, or alternatively, or in addition to the other ones. I am not sure. We will look into that. Now, the real pizza, the resistance. Hold your horses, I have to grab this charger. Mm -hmm. right, that's okay, we can do this. Real quick here. Ah, oh, look at this. And by the way, goodbye in case my batteries run out before I finish this. But you get the idea. How cool is this? And it is in three segments, just like they said. Ah, oh, it fits in all cool. So you slide it in. Badass. And another segment, I think. Let's not break this. There we go. So great, guys. Well, it was, but I'm embarrassing myself because I can't take this off. Well, anyway, we're going to figure this out, and it's going to be great. Let's try another one. You build up the temple over time, and we're all like, that's great. Come on, man. What are you doing to me? You're embarrassing me. All right. Badass. I get how it goes now. Okay. So freaking great. Alright, here are the new monsters. Now, it just seems greedy that Seth can not only corrupt monsters that you have, but he also gets his own. Doesn't feel fair. Let's look at them real quick. Or battery runs out. Oh, that freaking cool vulture. Yes. Oh my gosh, this guy. So nasty and powerful. We saw him too. Ooh, a crazy ass crocodile. The shading or texture on these is so good that I'm almost tempted to not even try and paint them unless I can keep the texture popping out. Other than this, the hypnotic cobra. They're all here. We've got this guy. Is that Seth himself? I'll find the power tile later and we'll find out if it's supposed to be like his incarnate or manifestation or something. We've got that crocodile, that crazy vulture. And remember, these are all gigantic. A troop is like a tiny little thing compared to these guys. These are just, you know, representational. They're not even as large as this compared to. But already... Seth's army looks incredibly cool. So his standard issue pieces like this. Oh, they look so mean and nasty and cool. And you know they just want to do evil shit. None of them have, like, intentions to, like, save an orphanage. No, these guys are here to burn down your family, eat every canned food item you have, and just steal your 401k and leave. And then, like, destroy Egypt. Because that's what they want. They want death. They worship the god of death. But we don't. We fight against these guys. And we're going to win. I hope. Maybe not. I mean, again, how can we win against this guy? It even has, like, crazy-ass cool tusks. So, you know, like, no, it's not of this world. Not really. Thanks for watching this silly long unboxing video. I hope you're as stoked as me. I'm mega stoked, but I know there might be some downsides to come with this, but I think it's going to be worth it and a lot of fun. And we'll make it our own. And you'll make it your own. Thanks for watching. Please like or subscribe or something. And have a wonderful, wonderful time playing your favorite board games. Remember, it's all about fun. It's about fun and keeping it fast-paced. Anyone who takes too long to do their turn or does a half hour long unboxing video. They're taking too long and hurting everyone's fun. So bite them with your crocodile. Tell them to hurry up.